Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study. I'm Henry Phillips, Pastor Henry Phillips, uh, your teacher. And if you're watching this uh, via YouTube, uh, tonight's lesson comes from uh, Colossians, the second chapter, verses 6 through 19. And uh, I'm going to be reading it into your hearing from the New Living Translation, uh, the Title of the lesson is Complete in Christ. But before I start reading, I want to remind uh, everyone that you could go ahead and uh, put comments in the uh, comment section on YouTube. Uh, if you have a question and you don't want to put it in the comment section, you could go ahead and use the uh, the email address that's in the description for this video to email me directly and I will respond uh, to your comments or to your questions. Uh, and then also in the description of uh, this video, there will be a number that you can text, uh, you know, if you have a prayer request. You can put your prayer request in the uh, comment section also. And those of you that are on this Zoom uh, call right now, you can either go off mute uh, to ask a question or, of course, put the question in the chat. Once again, going to read into your hearing Colossians, the second chapter, uh, verses 6 through 19. We are complete in Christ. And now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. Verse 9, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God in a human body. Verse 10, so you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. When you came to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by a physical procedure. Christ performed a spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to a new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature as not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all your sins. Oh. He forgave all our sins. Uh, verse 14, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat or drink or for not celebrating uh certain holy days or new moon ceremonies or Sabbaths. For these rules are only shadows of the reality yet to come. And Christ himself is that reality. Don't let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or worship of the angels, saying they have had visions about these things. Their sinful minds have made them proud and they are not connected to Christ, the head of the body, for he holds the whole body together with its joints and ligaments, and it grows as God nourishes it. Once again, read into your hearing Colossians, the second chapter, verses 6 through 19. We are complete in Christ. And uh, as our last lesson went, uh, this letter, uh, in Colossians was written by Paul. Uh, Paul had never been to Colossae, but he had heard that there was some disruption in Colossae 
uh, the Christians there, most of them Gentiles, were being told some uh, false things about what they needed to do in order to become Christians. And so uh, Paul decided to write this letter to them. And in the face of false teachers enticing arguments, Paul exhorts the Colossians to stand firm in the faith in Christ, for in Christ lives all the fullness of God. And their spiritual experience is complete in him. And what Paul was writing to the Colossians is still true today, because there are people out there that are saying that, you know, you got to do all of this extra stuff in order to be saved. And the truth is that Paul says, wait, hold on. Follow Jesus. That you, you were saved by believing in Jesus. Continue in that. Now, when we get saved, we're just starting this journey. So, so he's saying, hey, uh, first of all, reject apathy. Uh, get rid of the idea that because you got saved, you don't have to do anything more. Uh, let me find my, I'm not usually at, I'm not at home like I usually am. And so I'm flipping through different screens here. Uh, Philippians 3, 13 and 14 says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. So Paul himself, uh, writing to the Philippians, is saying, hey, uh, you know, all isn't done. I, I, here I am, an apostle, and I'm still doing what's needed to do in order to uh, to go forward in Christ and re reach the goal that, that God has called me to. So spiritual growth needs to be our goal. And then uh, I, I believe, uh, can someone find 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18? And then he says, with all of this that you're doing, as far as, uh, you know, growing strong in the truth that you were taught, you will overflow with thankfulness. So gratitude and thankfulness also needs to be the posture of those that are rooted and grounded in Christ. Has anybody found uh, 1 Thessalonians? 1 Thessalonians 5 and 8. 18, uh, 5 and 8. Yes, five minutes. Give and thanks in all circumstances. For, give thanks. Do I, am I on? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, give thanks in all circumstances, uh, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Okay. So, so uh, once again, it, it, a essential part of spiritual maturity is that you're giving thanks, your thankfulness. So uh, someone expresses that they're spiritually mature. Oh, my internet connect connection is unstable. Lord, help me. <laughs> uh, if someone expresses that they believe that they're sp spiritually mature and yet do not have gratitude, then I'd have to question whether or not they're uh, assessment is correct because as we grow in Christ, we become more grateful for what Christ has done for us. And then, if we turn amen. our attention, amen. Yeah, if we turn our attention to uh, the eighth verse, this is the reason why Paul wrote this letter to the Colossians. Uh, he was warning against false doctrines and. and uh, Paul wasn't so much against philosophy. He was against empty philosophy. I mean, because if you remember uh, in, in the book of Acts, he was talking to uh, the people of 
think it's Athens. I'm not sure. But, oh, it was the Temple of Athena. They they were at the Temple of Athena and they had uh, did a little statue to the unknown God. And he, he was telling them, hey, you, you're doing right here by, by saying that there is an unknown God, but you need to give up all of these other deities. So Paul wasn't against philosophy. It's just this empty or vain philosophy that is centered on uh, man's thought and not centered on who Christ is. It's not centered on who God has called us to be. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 21 says, since God in his wisdom saw to it that the world would never know him through human wisdom, he has used our foolish preaching to save those who believe. Because they were saying uh, Paul's uh, preaching was foolish, but Paul was saying, hey, uh, man's knowledge is never going to be enough to uh, put you in touch with God because uh, man's knowledge comes from this basis of uh, wrongful thinking. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You know, last week we discussed the supremacy of Christ. And given that fact, we are complete because uh, Jesus is supreme, Jesus is God. And so if we are in Jesus, uh, I think is that verse eight, let's see. Mm. All fullness, yeah, nine, for in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. Mm -hmm. And so you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is the head over every ruler and authority. So if we were to have a memory verse, it would be verse 10. So you are also complete through your union with Christ because we have believed on Christ. We are complete in Christ. And so uh, these people were telling them, oh, uh, yeah, you ought to be circumcised. And, and, oh, you need to do this and you need to do that. And Paul was saying, it doesn't take all of that. It takes your faith in Jesus Christ and, you know, that, that circumcision thing. Well, hey, okay, they want you to be circumcised. Guess what? You were, uh, Christ circumcised you. He cut away the sin and, let's see, yeah, cutting away our sinful nature. And then you want to talk about baptism? Well, you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. Now, there, uh, I, I believe Paul was talking about that uh, they were baptized in the spirit. Uh, where do I want to? Ah, yeah, here we go. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12 and 13, uh, Paul writes, some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free, but we have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. So uh, the, the, the Colossians would have been familiar with baptism also, because that, that was... Uh, something that was done at that time. Matter of fact, back in the early part of church, uh, they were probably baptizing, you know, every every Sunday. <laughs> mm -hmm. But but actually, the, Paul addresses that also. You know, uh, these people are telling you that you got to observe the Sabbath, you got to observe the new moon, you got to do this feast and that festival. And... Paul was saying, hey, because we are complete in Christ, we are free. So you, as long as you honor Christ and the day that you, uh, the day that you set aside for him, you're good. Same thing with nowadays. We, we don't do church on the Sabbath. There are still those people that do church on the Sabbath. They're okay. They're good with that. We do 
church on Sunday because that was the day that Christ uh, was risen from the grave. So uh, Paul is saying, hey, you are free to celebrate God any way you desire as long as you're celebrating God and not doing these things because of tradition or because of man's philosophy. And I believe that brings me to the, oh, uh, yeah, I'm covering legalism right now. Uh, the, the reference to circumcision indicates that the false teachers were probably of Jewish descent and that mm -hmm. the, Holy, the Holy Spirit baptizes us all who believe in Christ and that uh, legalism attempts to focus on our personal righteousness rather than focus on the supremacy of Christ. And, and that that's that's the main reason why Paul was saying, hey, wait, hold on. You know, uh, you're free to celebrate Christ in this way, but if your focus is on the day rather than your focus on Christ, if if you're uh if you're uh if you're focusing on this ritual rather than focusing on Christ, then you need to reevaluate whether or not you really need to do that ritual or reevaluate whether or not you really need to uh, go forth on, on such and such day. Do you really need to do this new moon festival if it's not about Christ? If it's about let me do this to show that I'm pious and that I'm saved, then you're a little bit off base. And then uh, finally, what Paul wants them to do is reject this mysticism. Uh, verse 19, and they are not connected to Christ. Uh, wait, no. Uh, verse 18, do not let anyone condemn you by insisting on pious self-denial or the worship of angels. So some of these philosophers were putting forth the idea that they had visions and that uh, they were worshiping amongst angels. And so anybody that tells you that uh, uh, experience is elevated to the level of Jesus Christ is just plain flat wrong. There is no, hey, we're going to the mountaintop to, you know, be with angels and that is a way for our salvation. None of that. If you want to be saved, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and that he died so that you could be free from your sins. That That's it. In some ways, I want to say it's that easy because it's that easy. But we always, well, I'm not going to say we, there are always people that are going to say there needs to be something else added to that. Now, this is a problem. Man cannot bring about his own salvation. And so any thought that man has to say this will bring about your, your salvation is false. Plain and simple, it's false. So uh, verse 19 says, they are not connected to Christ, the head of the body, for he holds the whole body together with its joints, ligaments, and it grows as God nourishes it. So, uh, Those are my four points that we need to reject apathy. We need to reject man-based philosophy. We need to reject legalism. And we need to reject mysticism. And just stick with what saved you. All right. If there's no questions... I'm going to go ahead and uh, do my practical points. First practical point, Christian life should be characterized by consistency 
stability, and a spirit of thanksgiving. Say number one or two again, consistency. Stability. Thank you. And a spirit of thanksgiving. Yeah. Now, uh, uh, over in the book of James, James says, hey, if you lack wisdom, ask God. I'm going to give you that. I'm going to help. I left you on the free what you have for dinner. I'm going to eat all this and all the time. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. It, it, yeah, over in uh, James, it says, if you lack wisdom, ask God. He, he going to give it to you. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to uh, put you down for asking for wisdom. No. So uh, instead of us being drawn away by these different philosophies that sound good to our human ears, but don't sound good to our spirit, and we want to overrule our spirit because our mind is saying this sounds good. No, pray, ask God for wisdom. He'll He'll reveal to you whether or not this is uh, something that you should, you know, uh, be messing with. I, I guess I shouldn't have said messing with, but anyway. Proceed. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so that's where I'm at right now. Uh, verses eight and nine tell you, reject any teaching that goes against the truth that Christ is God. If somebody tells you, oh, you know, yeah, we, we like this Bible, uh, but, you know, the, in, in this book here, it tells you how Jesus was a good philosopher. And it doesn't say that Jesus is God. Reject that. Any any type of teaching that says that uh, Jesus is separate from God, reject it. When we are grounded, uh, this is number three. When we are grounded in the truth that we are complete in Christ, false teaching will not have an appeal to us. So it, it, we need to, I mean, if you if you are in the habit of putting on the spiritual armor every day and you say, Lord, let me put on this, uh, gird up my loins with the belt of truth, and you continue to seek God's truth, eventually that false stuff that people are talking about, you know, uh, let's go to this mountain and see angels. Let's go over here and see this stuff, the, all of that mess is not going to have any appeal to you. Number four, we as Christians do not have to live in fear of Satan and his demons because they've already been defeated. And I, I didn't hit that too much in the lesson, but verse 15, uh, verse 15, in the this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. So because we're in Christ, uh, his victory has already uh, assured our victory if we stay in him. So Satan and his demons have already been defeated and we don't have to fear them. Now, realize that they have some tricks, but as long as we're in Christ and we're seeking him, we can overcome. We have overcome. Number five, we abandon our freedom in Christ if we try to adopt legalistic observances that some people demand we take on. I'm going to repeat that. You have given up your freedom in Christ if somebody over there says you got to do this and you say, okay, I'm doing this. Now, I I, I want to caution you though, because see, uh, we do have rules and uh, part of it is that 
because we're in Christ, we want to behave a certain way. We shouldn't desire to behave anything that's outside of the character of Christ. So, I mean, you got freedom, but when you act differently than Christ, when you act differently than Christ's character, then you're taking yourself out, outside of that uh, where you say, hey, I'm free. Because what we have the free will to do is to say, hey, Christ, you're my savior and I am submitting to your will. So submitting to God's will and you know, following all of these other, I'm going to say the word traditions, mm -hmm. sometimes is inconsistent. Sometimes tradition is good, but when tradition uh, has a shackle, when tradition keeps us from experiencing the full freedom that is within God, then uh, tradition has done us wrong. And then number six, do not listen to, follow anyone who elevates a person or experience to the same level of Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm going to say this one more time. Don't listen to or follow anybody that says, you know, uh, you know, their thing, whatever thing they doing will elevate you or will save you. The thing that saves you is your belief in Jesus Christ. All right, that was number six. Well, uh, I... I, I got to say that part of the reason why we're ending so soon is I'm in the different time zone as y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so it's 8.30 where I am. I know, okay. it's 7, I know it's 7.30 where you guys are. But uh, are there any questions? Mm -mm. All Good right. Luck. Then, Sister Judy, could I uh, have you close us in prayer? Sure, I'd be happy to. <clears throat> Dear Lord, thank you once again for allowing us to uh, come together uh, to study your word, to have a deeper understanding of what our Christian life is meant to be, um, that we ask you for consistency and stability in our growth. Uh, always remember to uh, give our thanks and a spirit of thanksgiving to you, um, that we are free and uh, encouraged to ask you for wisdom and that we are to reject anyone or anything that uh, says that Jesus isn't God or that they have the answers for us. Uh, we uh, are grateful for this opportunity to come together to share. We thank you for our pastor and his dedication and wisdom. Uh, we ask for his uh, safe return back to California and ask that uh, we have a meaningful experience uh, while he is away at his conference. We ask for healing, uh, spiritual, physical, and emotional healing for those that are in need of our congregation. And um, we ask uh, that you bring us together uh, next time we meet. Um, we ask these things in Jesus' name and thank you in advance for answered prayer. Amen. Amen. Once again, wanted to uh, remind, especially those that are watching this lesson via YouTube, uh, to go ahead and put any questions that you have down in the comment section, and I'll attempt to answer them as soon as possible. Or you could go ahead and uh, use my email address to send me a question. Uh, being that we're the Open Door House of Prayer, uh, our intercessors are meeting on Thursday to do prayer, and so... You can uh, call or text that number to send in a prayer request, and we'll make sure that the intercessors get a hold of that. Uh, and like and share this message, this, uh, this video with people that you know. You know somebody that needs to know about the supremacy of Christ and how that they're complete in him.
So I want to thank you for uh, joining us for Wednesday night Bible study. God bless. God bless.